Hi everybody, it's Tina Campbell, the New York Regional Partner of Master Networks. We're coming here for a lunch and learn with a friend of mine, Jack Rosenthal, who has written a book called Teen Investing, and he'll talk about this. Um, most importantly, I'm going to pick his brain on how to self-publish and, and then getting your brand out by writing a book. Hey, Jack. Hey, Tina. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Glad we were able to uh, set this up. Yeah, so I'm excited to teach the audience today a little bit about like kind of how I created my own book and also marketed that book because just as important as creating the book is marketing the book, right? Right. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of how they can use a book as like an extension of their own personal brand for their mm -hmm. personal and also for their business. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so you know, with that, let's get right into it. Well, so, can I can I ask you yeah, before we go into the book itself? I, I love to hear from people about themselves first. I okay. love that because it gives some context. Yeah, totally, totally. All right, so yeah, so uh, more about me is I run a digital marketing agency in Westchester called Star Social. Um, we mostly help businesses with their social media, social media branding, social media management, social media advertising, basically all things digital, particularly in social media. Um, and yeah, we help we help businesses all across Westchester, everything from like office businesses to local businesses to personal brands with their social media. Mm -hmm. um, I also happen to have written a book on teen investing totally separate topic however you know it was it's kind of like been a passion project which turned into like a really cool uh, opportunity through the book um, uh, I'm now reaching out to get potential speaking opportunities um, we're selling tons of copies with the book I'm building my own personal brand with the book right. um, so it's been a really cool way to kind of boost my own personal brand uh, as well as you know, as well as get some more information out there about teenage investing. So right. anyway, I know, I know it seems like two different, two different. No, problems. no, I get yeah, it. I well, I get it. But I think I've, you and I have talked about things so that yeah, I, totally. I, I, you know, I have that knowledge of what you were trying to do. But so the thing, you know, one of the things I, you know, I read your book and thank you for signing it. Cause I know someday you're going to be, you're going to be, um, you're going to be, uh, you know, well, to, you're going to be up there in the business world. And I could say, I knew you when, um, <laughs> I'll sell that book on eBay. No, I'm kidding. Um, but the most important thing is that, so you decided what was the niche? I just want to hear why you thought, um, uh, teen investing was an important topic. Cause I yeah. think, I, I think it is, but go ahead. Totally. So, so I actually have a whole background in teenage investing. Um, it's, it's a long story, so I will, I'll just kind of give you the quick uh, synopsis. Okay. But when I was 14 years old, my freshman year of high school, I created something called the Young Investors Club, um, which started off with just 20 kids, all putting in a thousand bucks. And basically the idea was we're gonna collectively manage our money in the stock market. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I continued to grow the club year after year. By junior year, we really expanded the growth of the club. The way that we've done it is we partnered with a large organization. We sent out emails to the parent members to get the kids to join. Um, so at that point, until junior year, we were only in New York. Then we decided to expand up and down the East Coast. So that basically created one of, if not the largest teen investing clubs, organizations where we actually invest real money in the stock market in wow. the country. Um, so based on my experience with that, I obviously have a lot of background with teenage investing, particularly teaching other teenagers about how to invest. Because through running this club, every single time we had a call, oh, mostly sure. what, what would end up happening is I'd be kind of teaching the other kids on the call, hey, here's what we should look for, here's what we should avoid in stocks. Um, so then based on with all that knowledge and also with the, uh, the help of my grandfather who's kind of been my like mentor to the stock market since I was 18. I was going to ask you who was, who was there behind Yeah, my, my grandfather was a commodities trader back in the day. Um, and he was really my mentor to me in the wow. stock market. That's so wonderful. Yes, yeah, so he's, yeah, so he's been teaching me since I was, uh, since I was young. Um, anyway, so based on all, with all the knowledge of running the actual club, really managing real money, teaching other teenagers and having my grandfather mentor me, I was able to kind of put all that information into a book. Um, the original purpose of the book was just to basically distribute it to all the members of the club. So yeah. I'm a senior now in high school. I'm going to be letting someone else manage the club next year because I'm going to be going to college. And it's just better to have a high school student managing the club rather than a college student older, out of the demographic. Mm -hmm. um, so, so with that, it's kind of like a parting gift. I wanted to write a book to kind of like leave everybody with some like principles of what they should look for for the Young Investors Club portfolio and for their own portfolios for the rest of their lives. Um, so I finished writing the book and I'm like, you know what? Why don't we open this book up to the public? I think that any teenager could learn from the principles and the my experiences that I teach in the book. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, we've had like had way better response response than I ever expected with the book. I expected to only sell like 
a few copies, a few dozen or so. Since then, we sold hundreds of copies. So yeah, it's been a great success, and um, and and it's really cool to have published a book. So let me ask you something. When you first were writing it, just to get a little bit pragmatic, because that's what a lot of us uh, are, are kind of asking. Yeah, totally. Um, what did you, you know, did you just write it on a Word doc? Did you write it on, make it a PDF? Just start, go through, you know, it doesn't have to be super detailed, but I kind of want to take me through those steps. Yeah, totally, totally. And I think this is a good kind of point to transition in the screen share that I said I would do. Or I'm gonna oh, show yeah, good. On account. Great. So let, me, let me set that up right now. But, you know, did you just, what did you write it on? I'm just curious. So I wrote it on a Word doc, simple Word doc. I mean, the book can be written on Google Docs, Word doc. It doesn't yeah. really matter as long as the words are there. Okay. Let me share the screen now. Okay, I think you can see it. Yep. All right, cool. So this is my, this is like the Amazon account. Now, obviously, you got to create this up. But basically, if you go to Amazon KDP. This is where you create an Amazon account. Um, and then, so once you wrote the book on a Word doc or Google doc, you then create an Amazon KPD account and ask you for all your information, your name information, bank information, allows you to upload the book. I can actually show you a little bit of like the inside. So sign in here. Uh, so here's like an example of the book. I'll just, I'll go like, this is literally all the information you fill out. That's but, uh, let me ask you one of the, while you're doing that, let me ask you something. So it's on a word doc. Yeah. But people are, are people just getting it? Like, so this is a hard copy. Yeah. So where yeah. did you get this? Is this also, you're going to so get into that? that's something that's so cool about Amazon, Tina. Okay. I don't have to be responsible for printing anything. It's kind of like drop shipping, if you've ever heard of that. Yeah. Amazon does ever, all the fulfillment for you. They print the book, they create the book, they print the book, they ship the book. I don't have to touch anything. All <laughs> I get paid is the royalties. That's which fantastic. Is, which is just so cool. Um, so anyway, so here's how you upload the book. You put the title all this information, what edition it is, the author, description, and then actually a neat little cool trick here. And this is really advanced stuff, but like, see, I have these little line breaks here, things. Yep. Yeah. That there's a page, page yeah, break, that, or pa uh, paragraph break. So yeah, that separates the text, which I didn't, you have to actually put in like a little HTML code there. Yep. To that to work. I, That's I good to know though. To find that out. Um, and then you put keywords that it is. So these are all the keywords that it's linked to. Mm -hmm. Obviously, whatever book, whatever kind of book you're writing about, you put in those kind of keywords, save and continue. Uh, and then you actually upload the book on the next page. And this is where you take that Word doc on your, here we go. Here's the upload. So you up, you have to create an IS, you can either create an ISBN number with Amazon. Now, the one thing about doing that is Amazon basically has full control over your book. So you can't publish it through this other platform. Uh, I forget the exact name of it. I'm trying to remember. Uh, a, uh, it, it's another, oh, oh, Ingram. So Ingram. Okay. I, I learned all about the book world through doing this. See, that's so, what I want to pick your brain, yeah. So Ingram is basically this platform that distributes to all the bookstores. All, almost all the bookstores buy from this platform called Ingram. I, I didn't know about that. But anyway, that's where you have to be if you want to be in bookstores. And Ingram doesn't allow you to have much control over your book on their platform. You basically can't upload your book to their platform if the ISB number was created with Amazon. So that's actually one of the regrets that I make. I should have actually create, spent a little like $10. I didn't want to spend much money in the beginning, but I should have spent $10 to create an ISBN number for myself. And then that way I have full control. Through, through what, what, um, there, like ISBN number creation. There's like a whole bunch of, um, websites that offer for you and you just basically pay a small hmm. price and you can just create one. So, so that's the one, that's the one thing I would have done differently doing it all over again. Amazon lets you put in somebody else, your own ISBN yeah, number. Yeah, see if I clicked use my own, I could have put it in there. Yeah. I mean, I know I used to work in a bookstore a long time ago, way before you were born. You and, probably uh, bought from Ingram, right? The, um, you know what? I'm think. yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. But also this, I just want to explain what the ISB number is. It's like the, um, um, you know, it's, like it's, it's the locator. Sorry. It's kind of like a barcode for a retailer. It's a, yeah, it's a barcode for realtors. So that, you know, um, yes. Like this. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, simple, simple information. And then obviously put in all the details about the book. And then the next page would be the, the price. And that's basically all there is to it. Um, I'll just Do they give you any price um, uh, advice? Yeah. So, so by the way, the last thing, just don't jump off guys at the end, I'm going to show my sales, which is like, uh, like I think a cool way to, you know, kind of show. That oh yeah. I want to see the analytics. That would be really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I actually spend money in advertising so you can see how the whole campaign works. Okay, um, cool. 
So, so, so the way with the sales is they recommend, I think like two ninety nine is considered like the best price in terms mm -hmm. of total sales volume. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you can make some books go for twenty seven ninety nine hard copies. Mm -hmm. There's a huge range, but really put whatever you kind of feel comfortable with selling your book. Amazon, mm -hmm. those those are broad ranges off of hundreds of thousands of books across tons of different sure. categories. Sure. Like you know, business books are obviously someone's willing to pay more for that because it's going to help them increase you know their money rather right. than like a romance novel or small romance novel, or a quick little short story. So 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 that's just an average. It covers a whole bunch of different topics. Uh -huh. um, so anyways, the pricing should really be up to you. But I've heard that two ninety nine is like the optimal amount. Do you are do they ex can you get a um, a uh, discount code like if I wanted to for instance let's say have a two, my book up there for two ninety nine just yep. because that that is fine with me but you know I'm really looking to create um, you know give it away to clients while I'm working with them some have some added value um, yep. can we I'm just looking for a promotional code that I can bring this down to zero so you can get it for yourself um, so I can give out that code let's say. Okay, gotcha. So, so there is no code. You can't create a promotional code. What you you can do two things. One, you can order order author copies, and these allow you to buy the books at just whatever the cost is of printing them and shipping them. So that's sure. just two dollars and fifty four cents. You click order author copies, and mm -hmm. allows you to order as many as you want, up to a thousand, mm -hmm. um, paying that basically, as I said, the printing and shipping cost. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing you can do is under promote and advertise, you can go. You can flick a special like countdown deal. And you just put a special deal on Amazon for everybody to have. So there's no like individual uh, discount code you can't create at the moment for as Kindle as far as selling books. However, right. you can create these like limited one-time deals. Or and you can also just price the book at $2.99 if you wanted to too. Okay. Um, however, I think the book, I think the minimum you can price it for is something like it, it has to cover the printing cost and the shipping cost. I think right. it, has to it be makes like sense. Around like five dollars, I think minimum. Okay. Um, okay, so so that covers that. And yeah, so anyway, so in order to get started, it's really three things. One, write in the book. Obviously, you got to have it in Word doc. Two, upload it to Amazon, which has relationships with Ingram and can allow your thing to be your book to be in bookstores all across the country. Um, and then, yeah, and then three is really marketing the book. And that's the last thing I want to talk about before I go into the sales. Okay. I think so, that Mark, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. So I just, so I just wanted to ask you one quick question about that. Does it have to be Word? Can it be a PDF? Uh, you know? it has to be, I don't think it could be a PDF. It, it might, I don't know. I didn't try with a PDF. I, I, okay. I think it might be able to, but I didn't try with a PDF. Yeah. I'm going to try that but only because I have some very basic graphics. Okay. Oh, and then the last thing, as far as writing the book and as far as creating the cover, like as you see, I have a nice cover design here. Yeah. I just went onto a website called Fiverr where I hired an editor for the, for editing the book and also yeah. a um, graphic designer for publishing, for creating the novel front and back cover. Yeah, I've used Fiverr for logos before. Yeah, it's great. It's logos, and, it's tons of book to cover designers there too. There's editors on Fiverr and would you, for a great price too. Okay, so, and so the other thing with just that one last question, so you can ask them then, you could probably give them whatever and you could say, edit this and please put it in the format that you needed for an, I can. Exactly. Yeah. All the Amazon editors know the proper format to put it in as far as actual what size, like what kind of right. font size the book should be in as well as what kind of a PDF or Word document. Okay, great. So really once you get, once you, what, whatever you put it on, then go to something like Fiverr to get the design for the cover and also to get it in the proper format. And then it's just uploading. And then it's just uploading. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then, so as I said, the last thing is marketing the book, right? There, every year, tens of thousands of authors publish books and, and most of those end up selling just a few copies. And the mm -hmm. difference between the offers that sell 10,000 copies or hundreds of copies and three copies just to their friends is the ones that are able to market well. Being a, being a successful book publisher means you're a good, uh, being a successful author means you're a good marketer. I like that's that's all the best authors or the best marketers at the end of the day. So so a couple of different ideas uh, in, as well as how to market your book. First off, just put it on Amazon. I get organic sales now from Amazon. However, in the beginning, it was like a lot of family and friends. Like the first day, I think we got like probably within the first week, we probably got 20 family and friends to get the book. After that, it's mostly been organic. Um, so first start with your family and friends network, you know, business according to master all, networks, master networks. Exactly. <laughs> like I promoted master networks. Start with like your core group. 
And I always show the book. I always, I always show the book. <laughs> I know. I know. I appreciate you for doing that, Nina. Um, so yeah, so start with your, your, start with your local group, start with your core group. And then as far as strangers, that's where you build up your social media profiles. So you put the link to your book in your Instagram bios, your Facebook bio, your LinkedIn, talk about the book on those different channels. If you have a YouTube channel, talk about the book on the YouTube channel. And that's really, so you start building an audience through social media and through digital platforms. And that's really the way to get your book sold to strangers. You write a blog, you put a little link at the bottom of the blog, get my book here. Those are all great ways to market your book online for free. Um, and then lastly, Oh, and then there's a couple of different things. I mean, obviously this is not everything, but there's a couple of other things. You can also go to bookstores. So what I did is one uh, weekend or two weekends, I drove around to all the different bookstores in, in Westchester and just like, hey, wrote this new book. I'm a teenager. I'm a local kid from Westchester. I'd love to put my book in your bookstore. And most of them were happy to take it. Or if they weren't happy to take it, they'll take it on consignment basis where basically they pay you if you sell, if they sell the book, which is fine with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and that's the third way to do it. And then the fourth way is with paid advertising, but that gets like a lot more complicated. And I would recommend starting off with organic and non-paid advertising. Right. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, cause you've got to set this other piece up and then, I mean, that's really not another, um, that's another lunch and learn that we could do later yeah, on. Yeah. That, that's a whole different answer. That's a whole yeah. marketing. Um, so if I have a question for you going back to, I'm still interested, sorry, I'm so interested in the process. Yeah, totally. That's cause, uh, because you're writing a book, so that makes sense. Right, because uh, I'm writing a book. So um, now with Fiverr, I want to ask you, do, do you, did you go to the editor that knows Amazon first? And then I just go looked to up book editor, and, and they all know how to publish. They know, all know how the okay. proper way to upload it to Amazon, almost all of them. Okay. Uh, especially, now, which I look for is ones with a lot of five-star reviews. Those obviously have done a lot of work before, so they know all kinds of different book projects. Right, and question for you, do they also, I mean, are they – not when they're editing it, are they coming back to you with some edits and saying, you know? Yeah, so there were some edits that I was like, ah, I don't feel like this needs to be changed, like some wording, you know, it's yeah. to interpretation. Um, but obviously, they'll still highlight the edits that they make, so you can just approve them or disapprove them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so that was helpful. It was helpful for me for like catching some of the glamour or things like that. Which, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, then afterwards, you went to somebody in, on Fiverr that was more of a graphic designer, correct? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Hold on, let me just turn the lights on. It's getting a little dark in here. That's okay. All right. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, is there any other, I don't know. Those are some good tips and tricks. I mean, I had actually no idea. Like I was saying to you, I was like, I, how, what do I do with this now? Yeah. You know, and then you can put your link to it in your e-signature, you know, right. Yeah. You can have it, um, you know, you can have it on your website, all of that. I think, um, I think it's the only thing that I I'm thinking is it's like, if I wanted to give it to a client, um, I guess that I would have to do it through, you know, buying it myself, uh, and be just because there wouldn't be, uh, yeah, you, you know, just order an author copy. Book. Like I ordered like 50 books to my house. I have like just yeah. a bunch of them. I can, you know, hand them out. Um, I can give them to bookstores, you know, I can do all that kind of stuff. Just, it's good to have a certain amount at your house. Um, yeah. okay. Anyways, now let's get into the, the sales portion. So this is in the last yeah. month. I've had the book for much longer than that, but this is just the last month. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So basically here's all, this is every single day, how many books. So this day is sold three, one, this day was a lot. I don't know what happened this day. We got like 10 people that ordered books on this one yeah. day. Match so, okay. so no, it wasn't matching that with that one thing. So you see it says distribution units. Yeah. That means a bookstore ordered it. So that's great. Yeah. So one bookstore that I must've sold books to before ordered 10 more copies of the yeah. book. And Too they, bad you can't see it. You, and you're not, you're not able to see exactly where that's coming from. Yeah. That's the weird thing about Amazon. The one thing is it doesn't let you, it doesn't tell you names of customers. It doesn't tell you who they are, where they're from. Yeah. Cause they're, they're protecting. Right? They, they're they don't, they, they want, want the information. Yeah. yeah they, they want, want emails. Yeah. They want the names. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. That's their client. Got exactly. Um, and then, yeah. So anyway, so this is book sales in the last month. And then this is also tracks this is pretty cool. This tracks how many pages were read of your, that book, your book that day on Kindle. On Kindle. So yeah, it tells you, you know, like how often people are reading. Oh, that's books. really cool. So anyways, and then that's, that's as far as sales from the last month. And then I also did a little bit of paid advertising on Amazon, which is not that complicated. Um, you click here and you click, I'll just take you to the advertising portal. So in the last month I spent like 50 bucks on advertising 
and I sold, and it, it's definitely, if you can target the right keywords, it's ROI positive for sure. So I spent $58 on advertising and we sold 12 mm -hmm. books because of that with a total oh, of wow. $173. Right. So we had like a, so yeah, we had a three X return on advertising. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so advertising is also a great way because basically what it does is targets keywords. So I'll show you right here, actually. Right. Puts you probably up uh, on their, on their pages saying, you know, uh, like just, just like, or recently viewed or something like that. Right? So, so what it does is when someone searches, searches something like these keywords, finance teenagers. So like this one, for example, spend some money here, finance teen books, or this one, financial mm -hmm. management teens. Or this one, which sold a copy, investing kids book. So all these kinds wow. of keywords that people are searching on Amazon, that's that's what you want to target for your book category. Wow. Obviously, my book is towards investing. So I mean, I think this is the difference. I was looking at some other um, ways of doing this, like Flipbook and a couple of the other ones. You don't get all this. You don't get analytics. You don't you get advertise. You know, advert. You can't advertise. You have to do it all yourself. Um, okay. So this and and then the other thing was I was concerned about, like some of them. Like it, they own it, you know, if you put it up on their site, um, you know, it's like, it's out of your hands. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I would be, I'd be weary of that. Amazon's pretty good with, um, with how much control, except for the ISB number, they're pretty good with everything else as far as how much control they give to the author about their rights. Can you take it down? Can I take the book down from Amazon? Yeah. Do you know? Uh, yeah, I believe I can. I can just unpublish the book. Okay, and possibly, do you know if you can like put in? I'm um, just as you may not know if you wanted to make changes so that you know you had the second. Yep, um, totally. I do that all the time. Like I'll like I'm like, hey, I want to add this extra one sentence here. I can literally go into the book, edit uh, content book details, and then re-upload the new script, which might have like one or two sentences different, and then it'll be up. You, it says maximum seventy two hours. Usually, it's up within twenty four hours. Oh wow. Okay. I mean that I think that's a lot of latitude. You know, yeah. um, I, I really didn't know. I had no idea. That's why I wanted. I was like talking to Maggie Carey and I'm like, I have to, I have to talk to Jack. And I said, well, wait a minute. If, if I'm asking, there might be other people also that, that want to do this. Um, did you want to just mention about branding, you know, uh, using a book to brand yourself? That was yeah, that kind of the last thing. Totally. So, so like, as you see, I've got my little back bio here on the book. Yep. Um, the book's been an incredible branding tool. I even include my email at the back of my book and I've had you know, kids email me from around the country saying that they love my book right. and how much it helped them. So that's just really cool to see. Um, and I think that it's really just a nice way of an extension of your personal brand. It gets your, it gets your name out there more. So if you put it like, let's say someone's following on social media, you know, converting them to buying your book is kind of like the next step along the funnel. It's all, it's all just a marketing funnel to get them to, to meet you, to do business with you, whatever the case may be, whatever your end goal is. So a book is really considered like the top line of the funnel. Social media following may be the real top line, but then after that, it's like getting them to buy your book. And then once they buy your book, they start to know you, they start to understand, like they read your whole story, so they know you a lot better. And then they'll reach out to you, get in more contact with you. And it really establishes a lot of authority in your marketplace. That's Yeah, I think that's the word. Yeah, that's the word. It's establishing authority and then in order to gain influence, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. I just, I wanted to ask you about the disclaimer that you have in the back. Was that something you knew to do? Or yeah, that was just, I didn't know to do that. I just wanted to include it just in case, you know, there's any legal issues or anything right, like that. Right, with somebody um, investing something exactly. and saying, obviously, you told me to do that. Obviously, finance is a regulated topic, so I just wanted to be, you know, perfect. Okay, just Talk to my eyes and dot my T's as far as legal. Just, yeah, no, I just was curious about that, if that came from the editor um, or that came from you. That's cool. So yeah. this is great. Um, so I want to, um, you know, Thank you for coming on. It's a Saturday and I appreciate you taking the time. And um, if you want to just stop on sharing and we can um, just, we'll just yep. say goodbye. Um, and then what we could do is if anybody's interested, I mean, what we'll do in this, um, at the bottom of this video, YouTube on YouTube is in the description. Jack will give me um, all of his contact information. We'll put it down, you know, down below there. And they'll be able to contact you if they have kids who are teens who want to learn about investing. They can get the book on Amazon. Plus, they also, you know, they can they can email you for maybe a question or two. Sure, uh, get, get involved in your social media if you want to put your website for your star social. That would be yep. great. And uh, just wish you all the best in your college career. And I know that you will because you already have a great start to you know your your business career. Uh, and I'm really proud of you. You know that. Thank you very much, Tina. That means a lot. All right. All right thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Bye.